this guy was using spinning tack on. He could zip that plug right where he wanted it. I knew that spinning was the way most people fish now, but that's all I knew about it. I never handled a spinning reel and didn't even know how it worked. It turned out it was going to change our whole vacation. I asked him if he'd tell me about this spinning business. He said, sure, come on in. <laughs> he uh, apparently had told so many people about it that it came out like a prepared lecture. His, his reel was a Johnson Sabre. Now first, he pushed and released the button to show me that there was no resistance. The line came out. And then he took off the face of the reel and showed me how the line spins off. He used a penny for a screwdriver to take off what he called the rotor. filament line. He told me that if the line breaks, or if you uh, want a different weight or a different kind of line, you can put in a new spool in a jiffy. He also said that I couldn't possibly get a backlash with an outfit like this. That cinched it. I'd whipped up more bird's nests in my day than Audubon saw in his whole lifetime. With no backlashes, I'd like to try fishing again. Jim and I were just getting acquainted with our new Johnson outfits when Carl arrived to show us how to use them. After meeting Jim, Carl got right down to business. Carl okayed mine, <laughs> but Jim slipped up in the pay attention department, so Carl went through it again. One. Two, three, four, five twists. Then put the end through the only opening there is, and back through the loop you just made. Then tighten it all down and cut off the free end. Cade Jim's knot and then picked up one of Jeannie's beach toys and tossed it out for a target. Carl said there's no telling where the first cast will go. So he showed us how to do it right. Handles up. Wrist action is better that way. Jim, always trying to keep ahead of me, paid strict attention. His second cast at least went in the right direction, but he used too much arm. So Carl demonstrated again by holding his arm so that his cast was all wrist action.
funny how strong old habits are? I had just watched Carl cast with good wrist action, yet I used my entire arm and body in my cast. Then Carl laid down the law. He told me to keep my feet planted in one spot. And then he had me hold my forearm so I had to cast with my wrist. And it worked beautifully. Then Rusty, the resort owner's son, showed up. Jim challenged him, hoping for company in the Duffer Club. But the moment he took the rod, we knew this boy was good. joined us, Jim was anxious to show off his new rod and reel, so he proudly stepped up and let fly. And he did pretty well. Even though she was a bit reluctant in front of all these <laughs> experts, I could see that Laura wanted to try it. Laura didn't quite know what to do with the rod, but she made a brave try. And did better than either of us. At least her plug went forward. By hesitating on her backswing, Laura had lost the whip action of the rod. And Carl had her whip the rod back and forth several times to get the feel that a cast is one continuous motion. You just never know what tomorrow might bring, do you? I watched a man catch a fish, and the next day we're practically a fishing family. And if it's this much fun on grass, it must be a circus out in the water. So we planned a big day of fishing. Rusty knows this lake and it's fish like an old time guide and he has a tackle box full of what it takes. Jim and I fired questions at him. Rusty's answers made sense. One of the big advantages of spin casting is that you can cast with a light lure. And that lure won't act right if it's tied to heavy hardware. So Rusty gave us tiny snaps to put on our lines rather than heavy leaders. Jim asked a good question. What do we use for bait? Jim, Laura, and Rusty were going after crappies, and Rusty predicted that jigs would fill the pan. Rusty thought we'd better learn how our drags worked before we tangled with the real thing, so he played fish. Jim just lets the handle on his Johnson gull turn backward for the drag to take effect. I have full power when I retrieve with my Johnson Sabra, and the drag takes over as the handle shifts backward a fraction of a turn. Rusty got his mother's Johnson Princess rod and reel for Laura and showed her how to use it. Beth and I went west to a sunfish spot Rusty told us about, while the others went east for crappies. Jeannie turned out to be a real good little fisherman. You know, at home she doesn't stay at one activity very long, but here she sat like a statue watching her bobber no matter how long between bites. I'd forgotten how exciting a diving bobber can be. I think it's the mystery of what's on the other end that makes it fun. Jeannie turned into a happy little dynamo when her cork dunked. Babbling and chattering, she wrestled the little critters up out of the depths and swung them over to Daddy. It was Ladies' Day in the crappie department, too. The boys said later that they held off until Laura caught the first crappie. <laughs> now, they didn't fool me with that kind of talk. Rusty's 
crappie hole is straight out from a sweeping branch of a big cottonwood tree. They anchor it a few feet from the branch and cast out across the hole. Good guides seldom promise anything, but Rusty had said that the cottonwood hole is a hot spot when they're hitting. Then, as if to prove his point, he nailed another big slab like Laura's. Jim came through in his turn, and they were on their way to a good string of fish. back in the bobber department, my partner and I were doing great. Jeannie managed to find big, juicy worms. And then made them irresistible with a light spray of lucky spit. having so much fun watching Jeannie that I left my hook bare most of the time. But I got a big bang out of catching those sweet little morsels too. Rusty had told us about a good place for a picnic where we'd all meet for a shore dinner. Jeannie and I were the first to arrive, so we gathered firewood for the fish fry. Jeannie and I allowed they had a fair string of crappies, but our team wasn't going to take a backseat for anybody. I told my partner to hoist our string up so they could see him. And they were mighty impressed, too. Rusty and I, being the old experts, volunteered to clean the fish, while Laura unpacked the goodies from the picnic basket, and Jim and Jeannie went for a hike.
a chipmunk stuffing his cheeks with acorns that reminded the kids it was time for lunch. Or it could have been the smell of frying fish drifting through the woods. At any rate, when Laura yelled, come and get it, all fishermen were present with appetites. After lunch, the men went bass fishing, and the ladies enjoyed a quiet afternoon on the shore where we'd picnicked. for a wild corner of the lake. It wasn't fished much, and Rusty knew there were big ones in there. You never know what you might see in one of these back bays, so we slipped in quietly and watched. He's good with a rod. I bet he could put a plug in your pocket. Jim was feeling his oats and thought he could do the same thing. <laughs> he overshot about 10 feet. I told him I could do better than that with my eyes shut. By golly, I did. And to add insult to injury, I hooked a bass on the cast. That drag. 
drag on the Sabre tires them fast. It was a nice large mount, and Jim began to get excited. I told him that when he got to be a big boy, he might catch one like it. And that made him mad, and he really went to work. But it was Rusty who got the next strike. Rusty's bass was considerably larger than mine and a handsome fish. I become intrigued by Rusty's citation reel on its Johnson spinning rod and asked if I could borrow it for a cast or two. He said, sure, and handed it over. <laughs> I forgot to push the button. And I got a strike. I flipped the reel over to look like mine, and Rusty flipped it back again because it's supposed to be upside down. And I was tied to a scrappy smallmouth bass. Jim wouldn't even look at my beautiful fish. So I needled him all the more, and I really poked it at him. And he said he was gonna catch my fish's granddad and went back to casting. Admit it. Jim and his new gull were handling that big largemouth beautifully. What's the old saying? A bird in the hand. Gee, why didn't I hold him over the boat? The conquering heroes went ashore with chesty pride and a beautiful string of fish. I rehearsed my story about the one that got away. Laura, sweet wife, wondered if I'd flip my lid. So I told her about the fine trophy that I had held so carefully in my hands and how misfortune had wrenched it from me and flung it into the deep. <laughs> my sad tale fell on sympathetic ears. Laura can fix anything. 
but Jim couldn't wait with his surprise. And was Mama ever proud? That's my boy.